so yeah, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we need to do is to draw a free body diagram for each of the three blocks. Before evaluating each of the three free body diagrams, note that we've called the tension in the rope that connects block one to block two, T12. And then we've also called the tension that connects block two to block three as T23. Block one has two forces acting at it, the downward gravitational force that we've labeled MG, and then the upward force that's exerted by the rope, and we've labeled that T12. Block two has several forces acting at it, the downward gravitational force, a normal force exerted by the table on block two, Block two is attached to both ropes, so we're going to have a T12 and the T23 force acting on it. And then as block two gets dragged across the surface of the table, we have the kinetic frictional force. Notice that we've pointed it to the left, and the reason that we've pointed it to the left is that block two is being pulled to the right. How do I know that? Well, we know that the mass of block three is 2m, whereas the mass of block one is only 1m. So overall, block three is going to pull this whole system sort of to the right, and that's going to cause block two to be dragged to the right. Therefore, the kinetic frictional force points opposite to the direction of that motion. Block three has only two forces acting at it, the downward gravitational force of 2mg and then the upward tension force of T23. We can recall that the kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So we can substitute that expression in for F sub k. We will also note that the normal force must be equal in magnitude to the downward gravitational force. And the reason for that is because block two is certainly not accelerating in the y direction. So there must be an overall net force of zero. That means the normal force will be equal in magnitude to the gravitational force acting on block two. So we'll make a substitution in for Fn. We can next apply Newton's second law to all three blocks separately. For example, for block one, the sum of the forces would be the positive tension force added to the negative gravitational force. Block two is accelerating in the x direction, so we have the positive T23 force and the negative T12 and kinetic frictional forces. For block three, we can arbitrarily call this direction the positive direction, and here the negative direction. We can see that there are then two forces, positive 2mg and minus T23. Notice for the Newton's second law of block three, we've included the mass of 2m, and also for the second law of block two. Now it turns out that when we add these three equations together, there is some convenient canceling that takes place. For instance, the positive T12 and the negative T12 would cancel if we added the equations together. And similarly, the positive T23 and the negative T23 would also cancel. So we'll go ahead and we'll add the rest of the terms that didn't cancel. We can combine the like terms right here. Because mass appears in all three terms of the equation, it can be divided out. We could then solve this equation for mu k, which is indeed what we are looking for, the coefficient of kinetic friction. We recall from the question that the acceleration was given to us as 0.5 meters per second squared, so we're going to be able to plug that in here. And then of course g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we compute that result on our calculator, we should obtain a mu k value of approximately 0.372, which is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional physics, calculus, chemistry, and other videos. And if you'd like, you can send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen.